send someone round to move it. Yeah, we'll sort it out. Bye. Have you seen Steve today? Didn't come home last night. Reckon he must have got lucky. Not so much lucky. That was the police. Found his cab wrecked on the Rochalt estate. Must have been stolen. So where's Steve? Well, that's what I'm asking you. Well, he didn't come to work? That's right. Vic! Come on, you eat your toast. Look, she's doing really well. Yeah. How come you end up packing more for one day than you would do for a fortnight? Mm. Tell me about it. Mm. Will Tyrone be there? Yep. Will he let me take Monica for a walk? I reckon so, yeah. Well, don't go pestering him. No, he's all right. Tyrone loves anybody who takes an interest in his dog. All right. But behave yourself. Oh, look at the state of you two here. Pass us that dishcloth, will you? Yeah. It's clean up time. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, hang on. Do you want some? No way! <laughs> <laughs> right, that'll be Jack and Vera. Get your coat on. And you two, let's get your coat so let's finish wiping. Come oh. on! Let's... <laughs> you know, your bathroom's about the same size as my room. <laughs> not that I'm complaining. Are we expecting anyone? If it's Mike, he's not coming in. Uh, not so tight with this one. I'll do it. A parcel has been delivered for Miss Sykes. Hey, do you think I should have given him a tip? I think seeing you dressed like that took his mind off the tip. <laughs> they dress some dead smart looking fellas looking here, aren't they? All so polite. Do you think they'd notice if I took one home with me? What is it? Oh, they're fantastic. Thought you may need something blue. Oh, my love, Mike. Oh, you're so lucky. <laughs> Now, if only I could find one of them waiter blokes with Mike's spending power. I'd be in heaven. <laughs> oh, Gina. Will you keep still? Yeah, well... Now, yeah. hang on a minute. Right, go on, you'll do. Now, we'll run through it one more time, eh? Have you got the rings? Yes, Dad, I've got the rings. Good lad. Do you want another cup of tea? No, I'm fine, thanks. What did you do last night, then? Not much. How about you? Oh, I went to see Alma. What did you do that for? I don't know. A bit of unfinished business. I just wanted to wipe the slate clean. Right. You're a... Not on second thoughts about the wedding, are you? Nah. Me and Alma go back a long way. It's just that uh, I felt a bit sorry for her. I just wanted to make sure that she was OK about the whole thing. Yeah, of course you did. But, you know... If you did have cold feet, it, it's not too late to call it off, you know. What do you mean? Why would I want to call it off? Well, I don't know. Just, if you're not sure, if you've got any doubts. Of course I'm sure. I'm 100% sure. 1,000% sure. Hey, come on. You're supposed to be my best man. You're supposed to give me a bit of support. Not try and talk me out of it. You like Linda, don't you? Do you think I'm doing the right thing? I just want you to be happy. Good lad. Right. Go through it one more time. Have, uh, have you got the ring? Oh, come on, Dad. Please, not again. Well, show me. You've seen them already. So humour me. You've got them in your pocket, haven't you? Let's have a look. Come on. <laughs> come on. Hey. Oh. What's going on? It's Stevie. Well, why would he be here, Vic? Well, because if he's not here, he's probably missing. He didn't come back to the flat last night, and the police have just phoned to say that they found his cab smashed up on the Rush Hall Estate. Right, have you tried his mobile? Yeah, I've done that. It's dead. Look, I don't know if it's got anything to do with Jez, but we might need to report him missing. Yeah, have you checked his car out? No. Right, let's start there. Go on, you drive. We could go over to cafe for a proper breakfast. No. We could go down to Rovers for a nice drink. No. We could go to Red Wreck for a bit of a walk. No. We could go up into town, have a look at stuff in shops that we can't afford. No. I'm sorry. The Weatherfield Tourist Board is running out of attractions. I've got all the attractions I need right here. Oh, right. 
Then we could leave this place a tip and go back to bed. Mm, now you're talking. Mm. Mm. She'll be fine. Yes, but I don't like leaving her to fend for herself, especially on the day her ex is getting married. Happen she'll find it... comfort in the solitude. Oh, you could run her to the airport. She could take a taxi. Yes, I know, but, well, do you know, I just feel like I'm abandoning her. All right, come on, we've time, I suppose, if we're quick. No, I'll go lift to the wedding with Rita. Hey? So you're making me drive Alma to the airport because you were feeling guilty and you're not coming with me? Yeah, well, you know how I get car sick if I have to sit in the back? Oh, come on. You're a treasure. I'm a mug. I'll see you at the wedding. Yeah. Oh, Fred. What? Thanks for the hat. Right, are we having another one? No, we are not. <coughs> what is the point of buying drinking here when we could be supping Baldwin's booze for nout? Well, you listen to me, Leslie Battersby. I want you on your best behaviour, right? Me? Look at me. Go on, look at me. I've not been this smart since I was in court. Well, if you show me up today, you'll be wearing that in hospital. Oh, wow. You look gorgeous. You know, I think I'm going to throw up. No, you're not. No, honestly, I felt queasy all morning and it's getting worse. What? It's just butterflies. Butterflies? Gina, it feels like I heard a stampede in Buffalo. Come here, I'll tell you what you need. Some more champagne. Here, get that down, you. Mm. Actually, that does feel better. Good stuff, innit? Mm. Slips down really easy. Could drink it all day. Do you know what? I reckon that's why rich folk always seem so confident. Because every time they get nervous about out, they just crack open a bottle of this stuff. Well, I could get used to it, and it definitely suits you. Do you think so? Absolutely. Hey, hey, you best be careful, though. After a few weeks sipping out of them little tiny glasses, you won't have strength to lift a pint pot. Give over. I may start drinking champagne out of a pint pot. Hey, a toast. Yeah, what to? To... to the soon-to-be Mrs Baldwin. Mrs Baldwin. Yeah, that sounds all right. Cheers. Cheers. We should call the cops. Yeah, call them. Yeah, please, please. I need to report a missing person. Do you want to describe them to? Yeah. Hello? Yes, Jim McDonald. No, his father, actually. Yes, my son, Steve. He's been missing the last night. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, oh, whoa, 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 hold on, look. The thing is, we found the motor. And this here's no accident. Somebody's knocked seven bells out of it. Yeah, look, uh, about six foot, short brown hair, blue eyes, medium build. Yeah, you've got all that. You've got this number now as well, look. Yeah. If you hear him, let me know. Right, cheers. No sign of him around there. Yeah, no. Put the cops off last night. The shacks up in his bird's bedroom. Yeah, right. Come on, let's go. doing down here? You're supposed to be up there with Linda. Oh, she wanted me to come and check the dudes of Lily she'd asked for. Yeah, tell them they're fantastic. She's done a marvellous job. Oh, she hasn't. She's lovely. Right, go on. Now you've seen them. Off you go. What's up? Let's go she'll run off if she gets a chance. Oh, just a minute. Look, someone wants me. Go on. Off you go. Uh, Gina. How's Linda? She's fine. No second thoughts? Nope. My dad has. He even went round to see Alma last night. And you can tell her that if you like. What are you trying to do? We're going round to see your ex-wife on the night before your wedding. What does that say to you? I don't know, because it's none of my business, is it? Just seems it's none of yours, neither. So just leave it alone, eh? You ask her who she really loves. You ask her that. 
Let me go. I mean it, Gina. So do I. Now this is nice. Very classy. No one can accuse your old man of skimping on anything. Now I take it there's a free bar somewhere. Um, yeah. Good lad. I'll tell you what, Vic, stop the car, will you? What? I don't know, I've just got a funny feeling, so I have. Something's not right, let's come take another look. We've looked! So we'll have another look. Right. Steve! Take that in there, okay? Ah, oh, you know, it's really kind of you to give me a lift. Well, order were offer coming to the airport as well, but I said no. You know how she is. <laughs> so how are you then? All right. Well, if you're asking me how am I coping with my ex-husband getting remarried today, not too bad. Good. Life goes on, eh? Well, it seems to. Whatever you do. That's the spirit. <laughs> Fred, um, can I ask you a question? Certainly. Fire away. Well, what do you think? I mean, you know Mike. Do you think it's going to work for him and Linda? To be honest with you, love, for I know no other way. I haven't the faintest idea. What do you think he does? Well, he seems to care for her, and as far as I can tell, she cares for him. Bottom line, he's big enough to make his own mistakes without us sticking our tent penneth in. Yeah, well, I suppose you're right. Anyway, come on, we don't want you late for the wedding of the year, and no. Mike, um, Mike hasn't got many real friends, so he'll need you there. Shall I save you a bit of cake? Uh, no, I don't think so. But just keep your eye on Mike for me, will you, hey? She's talking about Oh, really? Are you? Oh, no, I wouldn't change a thing about our wedding, not a single thing. No, me neither. So I do envy how easy it is for Everything's a struggle with us, isn't it? Everything's a battle. Ah, but sometimes the struggle makes the prize all the more valuable. Have you got... I've got the rings, all right? All right, there's no need to snap my head off. Sorry. But if you just stop worrying, you might even enjoy it. It's not the first wedding you've had, is it? What's wrong with you? Nothing's wrong with me. Hey, not long now, eh? Do you think she'll turn up? Well, if she doesn't, you won't be getting any dinner. <laughs> hey, come on, love. Cheer up. Don't think of it as losing a father. More like gaining a wicked stepmother. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back in a minute, Dad. Where are you going? I just need to get some air. But I'm getting married in ten minutes. Aw, oh, I'm knees nervous and all. Find him. Vic! Steve! Sorry. Hang in there, Stephen. Stephen? Steve, talk to me. Stephen, let me know you're alive. Vic! Vic! Get an ambulance now! Come on! Don't you die on me, Stephen! You hear me? You're not gonna die! Ambulance! You stay where you are, you stay with me, Stephen! Stay. stay with me, son! I'm here! I'm gasping. Wait, I'll be two minutes. I'm going to have to go again. That champagne keeps going right through. You look fantastic. What are you doing here? You should be inside with Mike. Really, you... You look fantastic. The first time I saw you, you looked good. You looked gorgeous. Nothing like this. Go back inside, Mark. The ceremony is about to begin. Can't start without you, can it? Please don't do this. Just hold my hand. Get back inside. Mark, have you gone mad? Mike's in there waiting. You should be with me, not him. You know you should. 
Come on, let's go. You've gone mad. Go where? Anywhere. Let's run away now. We can go anywhere you like. Leave all this behind. Just say the word. I know you want me as much as I want you. Linda, this is our last chance. I'm asking you to come away with me. All you need to do is say yes. No, I can't. What's going on? Nothing's going on. He's going. I'm going nowhere without you. Oh, no. I've made my mind up. I'm going to marry Mike. Right, you were to get inside. So what was all this about then, eh? It was a mistake, OK? I don't want you. I know you don't mean that. Right, come on. If you think I'm going back in there to watch this charade... I love you, for heaven's sake. No, you don't. Mark, I'm sorry about the way things turned out. I really am. But don't spoil this for me, please. It's over. I'm going to marry Mike. You better have these back then. Look, Mark, if you can't do this, then please, just go away. I don't care where, just go. You can have my car. The, the keys, they're in the hotel room. Gina, give him the key. I don't you know what you're doing. Come with me. I told you. I can't. I don't love you. Me and you, we were a mistake. And in a few minutes, I'm going to marry Mike. You are right? I've had better days. Yep. Me too. Where's the doctor? Where the hell's the doctor? What's Come on! How long's he been like this? Been since yesterday. And have you any idea how he got these injuries? Of course I have. He's had a kick and Can't you spot that? He's 100 over 60 and falling. He's going to be all right. And you wait in the family room, Is he going to be all right? Ah, there's my son there. And we'll take good care of him. Well, see you do, all right? Give them to Mike. Tell him Mark's ill. Ill? Yeah, say he's throwing off or something. I don't know. What, so you want me to lie to him? Well, would you rather tell him the truth? Yeah, all right. We'll have to find another best man. There must be somebody in there. This is the last time I agree to be anyone's best woman. We'll be all right. Yeah. Go on. Dear, where's Fred? He should be here by now. It looks like they're running late. Oh. Hey, you don't think she's done a run or two? We really ought to get started. Yeah, I know. All right. Don't worry. What's going on out there? Mark He's what? He must have got a stomach bug or something, because he can't stop throwing up. Are you joking with me? No, look. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to get another best man. Let's get back to Linda. Linda? Oh, excuse me, sir. I need to move the car. It's blocking the entrance. Miss Sykes's car. I'll move it if you let me have the keys. Oh. I'll leave it round the back and leave the keys for reception. Is there anything else?
poor thing. He looks like a lost little boy, doesn't he? I don't think he's got many friends here. Not real friends. I mean, nobody's coming forward, are they? Right, maybe you should offer. She's got to get not serious. Me, Baldwin's best man. Well, I know, but if you don't, who can? I hardly know the man. After all he's done to us, I can't say that I would choose him as a friend. But it's his wedding day, and if someone doesn't do something soon, it's going to be ruined. Come on. Well, that's ruined. Where is he? Oh, he's going to enjoy telling this story of the golf club, isn't he? Uh, excuse me, Mr Baldwin. Mm, yeah, not now. It's not a good time. It's just that we can uh, see you're in a bit of a dilemma and we wondered if we might be able to help. Help? You? I know these are unusual circumstances and uh, I'm sure you've got lots of friends here, but if you didn't want to trouble them, then Roy here would like to offer to step into the breach, so to speak. Roy? Yeah. My best man? Only as a last resort, once all other options have been exhausted. Well, that's a very kind offer, Roy. Mike, and uh, you don't seem to have any other options, and time is getting on. Um, I don't think we can delay any longer. Um, if we could get started, please. Here. Yeah. Don't lose them. Don't worry, Mr Baldwin. I shall endeavour not to let you down. Best of luck, both of you. Remind me to make a note in my diary. Make some new friends. At least try and look a bit happy, will you? It is your wedding day. Right. <laughs> Under the circumstances today, but might it be more appropriate if I referred to you as Mike? Roy, today you can call me anything. Should we phone someone? No. Not let know he's all right. I should have known something was wrong. No. I didn't come home last night. No, 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 it's not your fault, Vic. This one's down to me. Uh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, come on, son. You know damn well what happened after the trial. Sure you wanted to leg it and start a new life somewhere else? What did I say, eh? Oh. Like Jim McDonald. No, you stay here, son. That's what I told him. I'll look after you. I'll protect you. Mm -hmm. Did a good job last night, didn't I? I wish... I wish you didn't have to go back. Mm. Me too. Would you struggle much if I uh, tied you up and kept you hostage? I wouldn't struggle at all. Oh, right. <laughs> I think I've got a spare washing line under the sink. Mm -hmm. Hope it's one of them plastic ones. The rope one's really cut into your wrist. Yeah. Mm. I never thought I'd meet anybody like you. Maybe we should go back upstairs. Maybe we should just stay here. Mm. Repeat after me. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Michael Vernon Baldwin. To witness that I, Michael Vernon Baldwin. To take thee, Linda Sykes, to be my lawful wedded wife. To take thee, Linda Sykes, to be my lawful wedded wife. And I promise to love, cherish, honor and respect you for as long as we both shall live. And I promise to love, cherish, honor and respect you for as long as we both shall live. Now it's your turn. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present to witness that I, Linda Sykes, to witness that I, Linda Sykes, do take thee, 
Michael Vernon Baldwin, to be my lawful wedded husband. Do take thee, Michael Vernon Baldwin, to be my lawful wedded husband. And I promise to love, cherish, honour and respect you for as long as we both shall live. And I promise to love, cherish, honour and respect you for as long as we both shall live. It is now my great pleasure to pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. The doctor will explain everything to you. Read you are. Mr. MacDonald? Yeah. Look, sorry about earlier on. We get used to it. Oh, my God. How's he doing? He's lucky. Lucky you found him when you did. Another hour and you might not have made it. Is he gonna be okay? Yeah. He has severe bruising to the face and body. Seven broken ribs at the last count and most of his fingers have been broken too. He also has extensive internal injuries that suggest that he took quite a kicking while he was on the floor. We'll keep him in the high dependency unit for a bit longer but it's really more of a precaution. It's going to be quite some time before he's back to full fitness, though. Like I said, he's a lucky man. I'll leave you to it. Thank you. Try not to tire him out. What Stephen needs now is rest. Thanks. And thanks for coming. I'm chuffed you're here. Well, you need somebody to show off in front of, don't you? That's right. <laughs> hey, what happened to you, best man? Oh, you would. He would took sick. Oh. oh, posh weddings. They can make you feel like that sometimes. Oh, listen, let's have a group shop. How's the idea? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. What's your job? Mine to fail. Thanks. You all right? Oh, <laughs> hey. Well, I can't find him. Nobody's seen him anywhere. What's wrong with that boy? You were in port this was the minute pulls a stroke like this. Yeah, well, keep calm. He's probably in a toilet throwing up somewhere. <laughs> well, he better be, because if he's not, I'll kill him when I find him. Yeah, hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, right, my turn. It is the bride. Oh, hey! Get hello. off, sir. You're ruining your dress. Well, looks like your car's gone anywhere. Yeah. All I have to worry about now is calming the mic down a bit. How are you feeling? It's like I've been hit by a bus. Oh, at least your butterflies have gone. Red? Where have you been? Very sorry. Road works on 1056. Oh. Have I missed out? No, not really. Come on, I'll get you. Ah, ah, ah. Hi! Have you got your best man's speech sorted yet? Speech? Oh, yeah. I've got a couple of jokes. The crackers. A bit blue mind. You've got to start them laughing. Thank you. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. Hey! I've just heard your Mars left you in lurch. Yeah, while you were fannying around on the motorway, I had Roy Cropper as my best man. Well, I'm very sorry. I were delivering your ex-wife to her port. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the bride and groom will now take a tour of the grounds in their horse and carriage. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Sir, your carriage away. The reception will begin in half an hour in the main function room.
Stephen. Stephen, that's your dad. Don't try to talk now. You're going to be all right. Son, I need to know one thing from you. And I want you to try and let me know. I want you to tell me the truth. Did Quigley have anything to do with this? Shh, all right, Oak. Okay. Don't you worry your head now, son. I'll take care of everything. I'll be back to see you later. Vic. See you later, man. Car keys. Hey? Car keys, you heard me. No. Vic, I've told you. I want your car keys, and I want the address of Quigley while you're at it, okay? Don't you think we should let the police deal with this? Behave yourself, Vikram. The police are the ones that let him off already. I know that. Yes! You heard me. I've told you. I was meant to protect him, and I let him down. Now, I want the car keys, and I want Quigley's address, and I'd rather like them now. He lives in a flat. 45 Lansdowne Road. Now you're talking. Don't do anything stupid, eh? Stupid? I think you'll find Quigley's been a bit buck stupid. Me? What I'm going to do, that used to be called justice, my friend. I'll see you later. I asked him to do one thing, one simple thing. This is supposed to be our day. Yes, I know, and he's ruined it for you. Can't we just forget about Mark for a few hours? How can I forget about him? He's just humiliated me in front of everyone. Yeah, well, you're not going to change anything by ranting and raving. It's not easy. I trusted him. I mean, I know he can get a bit flaky at times, but I wanted him to be my best man, and he's let me down. I don't know why you were so surprised. Hey? All he ever does is let you down. And what's that supposed to mean? I'm agreeing with you, Mike. He's my son. And you were slagging him off. Well, I'm entitled to. And I'm not. No. Oh, this is nice, this is. Our first row. Right in the middle of me flaming romantic or strong carriage ride. Oi, and you, keep your eyes on the road. I never even had me breakfast. Yeah, well, at least we won't put any weight on. Are you feeling better? I'd feel much better if I knew what happened to Mark. Well, Mike, why don't we just cancel the reception and send out a search party? I'm sure if we got everybody out looking, we'd find him soon enough. I'm sorry, lad, but... Well, he's ruined everything for you, hasn't he? No, Mike, he hasn't. Because I won't let him. Why should he ruin my wedding day? As far as I'm concerned, the best man's still here. You know, you're absolutely right. So I'm going to stop moaning and concentrate on having a good time. How does that sound? That sounds great. Mm. Uh, ju ju just put your mind at rest. I've prepared a few notes from his speech. I won't be making it too personal, just a few reflections appropriate to the occasion. Oh, yeah, right. You were thinking of Isabel. Uh, was it so obvious? No, just a lucky guess. I don't know why I was thinking about her today. Well, it's a wedding. We all have memories of weddings. I wasn't thinking about our wedding. I was wondering what they were going to have for lunch today. Whether they were going to give her shepherd's pie. Isabel likes shepherd's pie. We don't have to stay if you're uncomfortable. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just being so comfortable and I'm so happy. That's because you're a caring, sensitive man. Do you think so? Yes, I do. Otherwise, I wouldn't have asked you. Honey? Oh, that's good. All right, I'll see you then, then. Throw up. Throw up. Kids are fine. Jack and Vera are taking them for a pizza. They'll be back about six. Good. Well, to realise it's nearly four, we've only just got dressed. Oh, I can soon change that. Hey, you just saw put something in your tea this morning. It's not my fault that you're irresistible. I can't help myself. Well, we better make the most of it, because it all ends at six. 
It doesn't have to. Yes, it does. Unless we've won the lottery and you forgot to tell me. What? I love you. Do you? Yes, I do. I love you too. Oh, good. <laughs> well, that's the hard bit over with. <laughs> when are you going to move in? Are you serious? Deadly. Well, I don't want to go back. Well, there you are then. We could be happy here, I know we could. Ladies and gentlemen, the best man. I, I, I won't keep you long. There's not a lot to say, really. Except what, what a magnificent wedding this is. Credit for which must go, I'm sure, to Linda for her good taste and organisational abilities. Here, here. Now, I, I can't say that I know Mike uh, that well at all, or, or indeed his good lady wife, but I do know that their romance hasn't always met with universal approval. Not only is, is there the, well, the obvious difference in their ages, but also because when their relationship began, he was the successful, well-to-do businessman and, and she was the lowly factory machinist. Because you, you see, Mike, I know from experience how cruel people can be when they don't approve. The funny looks, the raised eyebrow, those smiles that, that hide the, the nasty things they say behind your back. Sometimes it seems to me that people don't want to understand anything other than the norm. So I'd like to speak up for those of us who aren't normal. Those odd couples everywhere. Because what we know is that when you really love someone, nothing else really matters. No problem is too big, no obstacle too difficult to surmount. Now, there are people, probably in this room, who didn't think that Mike and Linda would get this far, but they have. And they have because they love each other. And that's what really matters. And it just goes to prove that uh, love can blossom in, in the most unlikely places. Uh, that, that, that's it. <clears throat> oh, oh, um, could you raise your glasses and toast the beautiful bride? The beautiful bride. Thank you, that, that's it. So, this is Emma. Yeah, it looks like. He looks in a pretty bad way, doesn't he? Yeah. Can I help you? DC right. Are you mate of Steve McDonald's? Um, yeah. I was the one that reported him missing. And I presume someone told you that we found him. Ambulance crew called us out. Said he took a pretty bad beating. Do you know anything about her? No, not really. What does not really mean? You'll have to ask Steve. Oh, we will. As soon as Doc says he's up to it. In the meantime, where's the coffee machine? Down the corridor, on the left. Cheers. What about our own school? We've got schools here. Yeah, but you've not got his friends and... It was my job. I know it's not much, but it's, it's not bad money. Warren likes it in Blackpool. He's happy there. So you're turning me down? No. I want to be with you more than anything in the world. Right. Right. I'll move in with you. What about the twins? Yeah, them too. 
No, seriously, they, they haven't really got a social circle. There's nothing here they're really gonna miss. Yeah, but you've got good friends. Yeah, and I'll miss them. But not as much as I'll miss you if we don't do this. You really are serious. Yeah. It'll be a bit cramped at first, but we'll sell this place and then we'll get a bigger place in Blackpool. Well, what about work? Well, they'll need taxi drivers in Blackpool. I can clean windows. I can work in a building trade. I'll work. That's not the question. The thing is, will you have me? Yeah, I'll have you. Well, well, well. What's the matter, Quigley? Don't you like surprises, son? Excuse me, I'll put the blue. Oh. It was a beautiful speech. I was so proud of you, Roy. Well, I wouldn't have done it if it hadn't been for you. I don't know how you can feel sorry for Baldwin after the way he's treated you. I just don't like seeing people unhappy, that's all. You're a very special person. I've got so much love in you, I almost feel guilty for keeping it to myself. Well, it, it's funny you should say that, because... I've been thinking. I mean, it's just something for us both to think about. I mean, I know it's just a dream, really, but... I just can't seem to get the idea out of my head. What, what idea? I think it's spending so much time with Bethany, but... I keep imagining what it'd be like if... we had a baby. But we can't. I mean, it's not possible. I, I know, I know, but it doesn't hurt to imagine, does it? Thanks ever so much for today. I know we never started off as proper friends, but I don't know, I'm really grateful. You're the best, best woman a girl could have. And you're turning into a soppy cow. <laughs> I mean it. I couldn't have done this without you. Come here. What are you going to do about the car? I don't know. Cross that bridge when I come to it. Best of luck. Thanks. I suppose I better find me husband. Yeah. <laughs> You are making a very big mistake. Oh, no, Quigley, I'm making no mistake. It's your mistake for beating up my son and leaving him for dead. I never even touched Oh, him. so it wasn't you. What did you do? Get some of your mates to do for it? Didn't have the bottle to do it yourself? Oh, I... Come on, that was business. Oh. He grasped me up. So you're not denying it, I take it. Well, no, why should I? Look, he's the one who started this. Ask him. Ask him? Oh, I. Well, I'll tell you what I'll ask him. I'll ask him when he regains consciousness. That's what I'll ask him. Look, this is lovely to see you and all that, but it's time you left. I'm not going anywhere quickly. I'm not going anywhere till I see you scared. Like you scared my son when you jumped him in a car park. You want to see me scared? Yes, I want to see you scared. Well, look at me. I'm absolutely terrified. Come on, Dad. It's going to take somebody bigger than you to scare me. Oh, really? Yeah, really. And today has got to be your lucky day because I'm going to cut you a deal. Walk away now. Because if you don't, you're not going to have legs to walk on. You can't be dressed. Is that a threat? Yes, that is a threat. Do you know, you really think you are a hard man, don't you? You go with what you're good at? Well, I'm going to tell you something, Sunbeam. You're not a hard man. You know what you are? You're a playground bully. You wouldn't have a rumble with anybody unless you had your mates with them. And not the truth, eh? Sticks and stones, Mr. MacDonald. Now your time's up. Get out of my... Make flat. me get out of your flat! Come on! <laughs> well, who's acting hard now? Because I want to see just how good you are. I want to see if you've got the bottle to take me. Have you got the bottle? Do you want to know something? I think you're a big girl, Jess. I think you're a big girl's blood. Come on, then! Oh, I come on, then, Well, Jess. keep on talking, then! Me. Come keep... on! I think you're a coward. You've got a streak. That way! Dad! Dad! Oh, God! I can see how big you are. Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up. Mike, can I ask you something? Why not? You are my wife. Did you have second thoughts about marrying me? I thought so. Well, didn't you? 
I mean, whichever way you look at it, it's a big step for both of us. We wouldn't be normal if we didn't think twice about it. So Roy Cropper was wrong, then? We are normal. We both turned up, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me, Mrs. Baldwin, what do you think of the earrings? Oh, the gorgeous, Mike. Gina went green when she saw them. No regrets now. Oh, come on. We've only been married a couple of hours. Come here. No regrets, no doubts. It's all right, love. We're married. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I married you. Why? You've got class. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I should carry you over the threshold. What, with your back? He's steady on. There's still life in the old dog yet. Well, I should hope so. It is my wedding night. <laughs> 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 Hiya. Surprise? Well, what the flaming hell are you doing here? I'm afraid I've drunk all your champagne. But I suppose I should be saying congratulations, eh? Can I kiss the bride? Get off me. You selfish, ungrateful little... Mike, please, no. Is this what it was like before, eh? Is this why you and Gina were covering for him? Just let him go. What is wrong with you? God, I don't know. I'm drunk. What's wrong with you? Does that make you feel any better? Do you want another one? I don't care. The more, the merrier. I, I don't understand you. Yeah, well, don't worry about it, Dad. I don't understand me neither. Why did you do it? I mean, what was the point? The point? Yes, the point! You made a laughing stock of me out there. My friends, my work colleagues. You made me look a damn fool. Oh, but the thing is, Dad, what you don't realise is that you are a damn fool. No, you are the fool! You had everything! Anything you wanted, I gave you, and you blew it. Today you had everything and you just threw it away. You've no idea, have you? You really haven't got a clue. No. You think that you're a laughing stock? Do you want to know the biggest joke? The biggest joke in the world. The biggest joke is that me and your lovely wife here have been having an affair behind your back. He's drunk. Get out! And if all your friends and colleagues found out about that, that's when they'd be laughing at you. I said, get out! What is it? Do you not believe me? Then ask her. We were having sex in your precious little factory an hour before you asked her to marry you. So you see, Dad, you are the fool. And we made you the fool, me and her. What do you think we were doing on all those driving lessons? Why do you think I've kept running away? Why do you think that I couldn't stand next to you when you got married? Look at me. I'm waiting. We never planned it. It just kind of happened. Right. Ow. Get out of the way, you. Dad, I'm sorry. I... Mike, no. M Mike, please. Leave him, Mike. Yeah. I... Dad, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dad. Done this banged up. I told you. I fell down. You fell down. Did anyone help you fall down? I don't remember. I'll tell you what. I'll go away and I'll file a report on your accidental fall downstairs. But you have a think, eh? Because maybe when painkillers wear off, your memory might come back. Come on. Oh, we have Hi, look at her. <laughs> <laughs> we were 
were drinking this at 10 o'clock this morning. <laughs> well, Adam Linda needed some Dutch courage. Hey, now, come on, spill the beans. What happened behind closed doors? My lips are sealed. Oh, come mm. on. I bet you know what happened tomorrow. Yeah, he was ill. Yeah, he looked ready to throw up when I last seen him. <laughs> hey, hey, I'll tell you one thing, though. This morning when we were getting mad, Mike sent over this parcel for Linda. What, were it? A bomb? No, it was the most gorgeous pair of sapphire earrings. Just perfect for going dress. Mm. I don't know how he knew. Did you see him? Mm. I saw him. And he put this note in saying, thought you might need something blue. Oh, my love, Mike. Oh, it's dead romantic. Can you not tell us something bad? I hate it when Linda gets everything she wants. <laughs> I wonder if Linda and Mike have thought about having children. I mean, I know he's got them all out, but she's still young. She might want children of her own, eh? I really don't think it's our place to speculate on other people's private lives. But, but yes, I suppose it is only natural to be mother and wants to. I even dream about it sometimes. Having a baby to look after, to hold. You know, you make a great dad. Well, I don't know about that, but it don't really matter, does it? Because it, it's not going to happen. It can't. I know, but I can't help the way I feel, can I? I just thought you were happy with me. I am happy with you. Of course I am. I shouldn't have said anything. I'm, I'm just being silly, letting my feelings run away with me. Oh, you... Oh, look at me. I love you, and nothing will ever change that. Yeah. yeah. Right. You sit down and shut up. You sit there. Now, I want to know everything. What else do you need to know, Dad? Well, for starters, who else knows about this? Nobody knows. Nobody outside this room. Honest, Mike, we're not daft. We knew how upset you'd be if it ever got out. And we never wanted that, did we? I thought I told you to be quiet. You, look at me. Now, I want the truth. I want to know everything that you two got up to behind my back. Please. How many times did you do it and where? Oh, come on, I don't know. I wasn't counting. More than once? Yeah, a lot more than once. Where? Well, where do you think? In my flat? In the car? In my flat? Yeah. In my bed? What difference it... Mike! I love her! Do you think I'd do something like this to my own dad if I didn't love her? I mean, what kind of person do you think I am? I'm just beginning to find out. So why are you just looking at me? She feels the same. She loves me. And if it wasn't for you, then we'd be together now. No, we wouldn't. I thought me and you would split up. I was upset and confused. I made a mistake. A mistake? Yeah. A stupid mistake. So what, you, you just kept making that mistake again and again? I tried to end it loads of times. You wouldn't listen. You what? <laughs> you were the one keeping it going. You told me you loved me. Or was that just a lie? Was that just another one of your lies? You only hear what you want to. I love Mike. I married Mike. I'm not going to listen to this. If you want to believe her lies, then you're an even bigger fool than I thought you were. Sit down. I said, I'm going. And I said, sit down. No one goes anywhere until I say so. Do you understand? What? Nothing. You're staring at me. Eat your beans. Four stories, but they gave in eventually. Tea's ready. Good all. I think we should tell him. Oh, yeah. Right. I know you're talking about me. Oh, big ears. Get that from me. Right. <sighs> um, we were wondering what you'd think if Gary and the twins came to live with us in Blackpool. It's too small. Well, we'll get a bigger place as soon as we can. So we're moving house? Well, yeah, maybe. But it doesn't mean you've got to move schools or lose your friends or anything. Right. Is that all right, then? Yeah, I suppose so, if you like. 
Well, that sounds like a vote of confidence to me. Are you sure you're happy about this? Yeah, I'll finish. What's for pudding? Hi, Vic. Yeah, he's asleep. How's he doing? Has the doctor been around? Uh, no. But the coppers have. Have they now? Yeah. He sent them packing. Told me he fell down the stairs. Well, they don't need to worry their heads about this anymore. Did you go and see Jez? What happened? <sighs> Vic, that's a great wee car, so it is. Runs like a dream. What's up with your knuckles? <sighs> I had a wee look under the bonnet, all right? I must have just scuffed them on something, all right? Being a bit clumsy. What happened? Do you know, he's got a bit more colour in him, so he has. Jim, did you see Jess? Vic, look, don't ask the question, all right? Believe me, you don't want to know the answer, OK? So shut up. OK? Tell me, since you've been back, have I uh, done anything wrong? Have I been a bad father? No. Or did I make you feel welcome, make you feel as if you belong, make you part of my life, part of my work? I mean, just remind me, uh, did I tell you how much I thought about you, how I love being with you, how I love working with you? Did I, did I say how proud I was of you? Yeah, yeah, I, I, you've been great. Then what the hell gave you the idea you could sleep with my girlfriend? But she's not yours! Yes, she is! She is not yours, she is mine! As far as you are concerned, she's my girlfriend, my fiance, and my wife. And nobody, but nobody, messes with what's mine. You don't own people. You might think that you do, but you don't. You can't buy a son or a wife. I feel sick. Yeah, you're not the only one. Thank you. <laughs> I could get used to this. He makes a change to pulling pies. Yes. What's happened to the happy couple? I mean, they'll be sat in the dancing suit. They've been up there ages. How long does it take to get Jane up? Up and they got interrupted by desire. Hey, you don't think he's gone again? It's a strenuous business consummating the marriage. He might have had another dicky turn. Oh, don't be daft. I warned him. Listen. Why don't you go up and see what's taking us along? Where? Well, Fred's right. They might be, you know, celebrating the nuptials. <laughs> I don't think it's that kind of marriage, is it? I mean, she's more likely checking out his credit rating. Oh, but they should be down here, really, to start off the dancing. Well, there's no way I'm going up there. Oh, well, I didn't mind going up there. No, 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 it's all right. It's all right, I'll go. Take a bucket of water, you can chuck it over them. Are you all right? Why? Worried about me? Yeah, I am. Yeah, well, I'm sure if I was going to have another heart attack over all this, I'd have had it by now, but uh, thank you for your concern. I keep remembering what you said when you were in hospital, about only realising what you've got when you're about to lose it. Mike, if I could go back, if I had another chance... Here, come here. There's something I want to show you. Look. What? Ladies and gentlemen, the bride and groom. Cropper was right. We are the odd couple. No. People have been laughing at us all day. No. You're not looking. Look, we're a joke. How could I have been so stupid, eh? Come and tell me, how could I have been so stupid? And all I had to do was look in the mirror. Have you any idea what you've done to me? Eh? Any idea at all? Shall I get that? No. No? It's Gina. Are you there? I'll get rid of her, OK? Yeah. I promise I'll get rid of her. Go on, then. Hiya. Are you all right? I was wondering where you are. No, I'm fine. Oh, you've not changed yet? No. I've come and start dancing soon. Are you coming down? Uh, Mike's asleep. Asleep? Yeah, it's been a bit of a tough day. I'm knackered myself, to be honest. But don't tell anyone. We'll be down later. All right. Gone. Well, you're a good liar, I'll say that for you. I always thought we were the same, you and me. Said what we thought. Never mind the consequences. Tell the truth, even though you might hurt someone's feelings. 
I thought you were one of the few people I've met I could trust. Mike. Yeah, go on, lie to me some more, tell me more lies. Make me stop feeling like I've been betrayed, humiliated, stabbed in the back by the only two people I really care about. Mike, look at me. It would just sex. And that's supposed to make me feel better? It's the truth. He's my son. I know. Maybe that was my way of getting back at you. I don't know. But it wasn't because I wasn't happy being with you or I wanted someone younger. I thought we'd split up. Are you saying you've never looked at another woman and thought, if we can just have sex, no relationship, no strings... This isn't about me. If you give me time, Mike, enough time, I'll make this up to you. I mean it. You might think I've got a funny way of showing it, but I love you. When we started going out together, you made me feel 20 years younger. Couldn't believe my luck. I never in a million years thought you'd stick with me. I never thought that a girl like you could have any real feelings about a bloke like me. And if I couldn't believe that then, how the hell do you think I'm gonna believe it now? He was all right about it, wasn't he? As far as Warren's concerned, we're moving in together, what's the big deal? It's not like we're buying him a mountain bike. Right, first thing tomorrow, I'll get this up for sale. As soon as we sell it, we'll have an idea of what we can buy in Blackpool. Are you sure about this? It's a big step. What? Blackpool or you? Well, both. We've not known each other that long, and we don't know Blackpool at all. Yeah, I know, but I'm not a big thing, Kate. I look at something, or I, um, I think about something, and I have a feeling about it. And if it's a bad feeling, then I steer clear. But with you, I don't know why. I feel so sure, but I do. So, Blackpool, Warren, you. I'll take all three. I'm going to make you a happy man, Gary Mallet. You already have done. Mm. More than once today. To a new beginning. I'll drink to that. Come on, my princess. <laughs> now I ask you for it. Oh, thank you, I love to. <laughs> uh, I should just be engaged. Oh, I'm fine here, thank you. It is a wedding, and, and the music's playing, and there's a lovely polished dance floor, and, and the prize-winning dancer willing to escort you. How can I refuse? <laughs> of you wanting something I can't give you. I hate the feeling that I can't make you happy. But I am happy. I'm happier than I've ever been or ever thought I could be. We're just talking, that's all. Just telling you how I feel sometimes. Sharing a few daft thoughts with a man I love. Well, I'm happy the way things are. Me too. Well, almost. There is one thing that will make me happy. Oh. If someone would ask me to dance, I mean, you... Don't happen to know anybody might want to do that, do you? Yes, yes, sir. I would like to ask you to dance. We can't let all them lessons go to waste, can we? Right. You 
you know I love you, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I do. Can I say something? I don't suppose I can stop you. Do you want to know why I first came round to the flat after Alma left? It wasn't the money. What was it then? I fancied you. <laughs> I've never had a thing for older men or out like that. But it's the truth, I just fancied you. And I was cocky enough to do something about it. Oh, yeah, and what about Mark? Do you fancy him? Yeah, once. But there's more to it with you. A lot more. I know you joke about it, but you respected me. And no one's ever done that before. And I know you made me jump through hoops, but you helped get me from behind that machine and start really working. I feel like I've grown into a completely new person since I've been with you. All this with Mark, that was the old Linda. But she's gone now. And the new Linda will do anything to make sure she don't lose you. But why Mark? You could have picked anyone you wanted, anyone. I didn't pick him. I wasn't looking for summer. He's a kid. He knew what he was doing. I tried to stop it, Mike. But he just wouldn't let go. It was like he was obsessed. I don't know, infatuated. Whichever way I turned, I was going to hurt someone. I was trapped. Yeah, so you just carried on sleeping with him, yeah? If I hadn't, if he'd have told you, you'd have chucked us both out. And I didn't want to lose you. All I wanted was for him to go away and leave us alone. But he kept coming back. Yeah, so I noticed. Do you want to know what really happened today? Yeah. Yeah, go on, tell me. He tried to stop the wedding. He wanted me to run off with him. Minutes before we were supposed to be getting wed, he was begging me to run away with him. And he wasn't drunk then. But I sent him away and I told him I loved you and I was going to marry you. Mike, I know what me and Mark did was terrible, but it was over. And I'd made me choice. I chose you. This wedding, it was supposed to be a new start. She said you'd try to stop the wedding. Well, of course I did. We love each other. No, Mark. It's all in your head. What are you still lying for? He's not going to take you back, not now. She also said that you asked her to go away with you today. So? I did. Oh, come on. You two could never be happy together. You might not thank me for it, but I was trying to save you from a bad marriage. Look, you want to know if she really loves me? How about this? When she thought that I was leaving after you'd had your heart attack, she made up a story that you only had three months left to live just to keep me here. Now, if she didn't love me, why did she do that? When are you going to say anything? I've heard enough. Get out. Are you serious? I've never been more serious in my life. You're no son of mine. But, Dad, I've told you the truth. You said that you don't believe me. You've said it all yourself. I've known her longer than I've known you. And in the short time that I have known you, I've found I, I can't trust you. And I don't like you. So you heard what I said. Get out. I don't believe this. If you don't leave in the next five seconds, I'm going to come over there and throw you out myself. One, two, three. Great. 
grapes. You can't eat grapes. Yeah, well, I can. I love grapes. And they're rather in our house, unless someone with them. But it's a shop back here. It won't be a minute. Wait here for me. I hope they've got seed. Here. Do you want me to go and all? Look, Mike, I've told you how I feel. But if you want rid of me, I'll make it easy for you. We can get a divorce. I won't take a penny. Look, just be quiet a minute, will you? I'm thinking. Are you sure no one knows about this? Positive. Well, the car will be here soon. It takes to the airport. And no one suspects? I reckon most people thought I didn't get on with Mark because I was jealous of how close he was to you. Right, get that dress off. You'll have to undo it for me. Go on, you can change in the bathroom. Hey son, are you feeling any better? No. I tried to get a hold of your mommy. She wasn't there, so I left a message on the answer machine. I think she ought to know, don't you? I suppose so. You know, the good thing about all this is... Catch yourself on, Stephen. There's nothing good about getting your head kicked in. It's over. It's finished. Oh, crikey, you look awful. Hello, Eileen. Shouldn't you be at work? Well, we took the day off as a mark of respect. Do us a favour, he's not dead. Well, I know, but we were quiet anyway. So, uh, what happened? Was it hurt to talk? I well, suppose you'll be able to eat these grapes. Do you mind if I have one? I'll be back in a second, son. No. Yes, Mick, what? I've just seen our mutual friend being wheeled in here on a trolley. Who's our mutual friend? Jez. What, in here? Yeah. And he looked like someone had given him a bit of a going over. Oh, yeah, was that right? Hmm. Oh, well, knock me down with a feather. Still don't know what you want me to do. You smile. You keep smiling till we get on that plane, all right? Everybody, they're coming! <laughs> hey, up! Oh, we know what you've been doing! You're supposed to wait till you're done. You're only moving, pal! Oh, dear, bro. <laughs> hey, are you going to throw the park here? It's traditional. Hello, Tiffany. That's a recipe for dying happy. Well, last chance to kiss the bride. You've had yours. From Aww. now on, I'm saving all my kisses for just one man. Aww. Come on, then, let's go. <laughs> He's bossing me about already. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday's Coronation Street is at the later time of a quarter to ten after the big match. In half an hour, at 8.30, who wants to be a millionaire?